So the January transfer window is closed. And January transfer window passes without Manchester United making a signing. Now, this video, some of you might come here and say, ah, oh, this is a bit reactionary, Sam. I would disagree when I say that Manchester United are a joke here. And I would disagree because this is not a reaction that stemmed from the last 31 days. This is a reaction that stemmed from the last five years. If we take a look here at what Manchester United did in the January transfer window, I can see some good there, of course. Ethan Laird, I think that's an excellent move to Bournemouth. To Anzebe, to La Napoli, that could be exciting. Martial to Sevilla, he didn't want to be at the club. I didn't want him at the club. Ahmad Diallo at Rangers, scored a goal after five minutes. I hope he shines there. Donny van der Beek to Everton, we were never going to give him a chance, really. But the reason I'm pissed off is because... When it comes to success, when it comes to building, actual rebuilding, success has to be something that's sustained. Year on, you build. Window upon window, you build. And the steps, you slowly climb back towards the Premier League title that we all want. But Manchester United, we've been Bagel FC for a long time now. No, no midfield bite there whatsoever. You know, the last time that Manchester United signed a proper defensive midfielder, I'll let you think about this for a second before I pull it up. No, there's your second. The last time we did was when we signed Nemanja Matic. When was that? July 2017. We are now coming up to nearly five years. The five-year anniversary of Manchester United signing a defensive midfielder. That's staggering. And it's, it's almost negligent. It's, it's, I don't know how Manchester United continue to go, to go by window by window and not sign a defensive midfielder. Now, the immediate argument coming back at me on this one might be saying, Sam, hold your horses, man. It's January. We've got an interim manager. How do you expect Manchester United to back uh, Ralph Rangnick with a ton of money with a midfielder who, you know, might not suit the manager who comes in? That's what happens when you plan in the long term. That's the whole point of having a person like John Murto who can sign a player for the club and make sure that whatever manager comes in next that player will still suit his system. It goes to show that the planning still isn't going on behind the scenes there. And when it comes to value in the market, I've said it quite a few times in this January transfer window. And I know that Dennis Sicaria might not have been the solution to Man United's problems, but herein lies the issue, right? I guarantee you, if West Ham had a slightly poorer season so far, and West Ham maybe weren't in the Europa League knockout rounds, that we would have gone after Declan Rice because he's he's the sexy number one target. And I think that's a bit of a massive mental issue that Man United still clearly have because Dennis Sicaria, for whatever his flaws may be as a football player, I don't know what they are, but Juventus certainly saw the power in signing him for 5 million euros. That's what it is. Man United, we've obviously got the main targets we've been going for. Jaden Sancho, geez, we've hardly used him. Um, Rafael Varane. But then when it comes to squad strengthening there, with Dennis Sicaria, that sums it all up for me. He might not have been the sexiest signing. He might not have been the perfect signing. It might not massively have improved Manchester United squad in years to come. But signing Dennis Sicaria there for 5 million euros would have been a great squad boost and a boost that Rangnick desperately needs. You see a window that's gone by now where Liverpool, they don't need to sign anybody. Luis Diaz comes in. And they're trying to get a deal over the line for the Fulham youngster, which I think they will do. Chelsea, I mean, they spent enough over the last couple of windows. They don't really need anything and neither do Chelsea. Then you see Spurs, they're definitely strengthening and, and giving some backing to Conte. Now, this is where United are stuck, I suppose, between two managers, between sacking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and getting a new permanent manager in after Ralph Ragnick. But the thing that's really pissed me off here about Manchester United the most is... The whole Jesse Lingard situation and what I fear it may have done or sort of indicated is going to happen in the future because we've heard on more than one occasion and today from David Ornstein in the morning that Ralph Radnick gave the green light to Jesse Lingard to move after the whole Mason Greenwood situation started to develop. And now we're hearing that Man United have blocked the move for Lingard to Newcastle after. Lingard has been given the all clear by Ragnick. Ra Ralph has taken a decision that he's okay not having Lingard before the end of the season, but the club said, hold on, 
No, we're keeping him at the club. Is that Ralph being undermined by the board? Is that Ralph being undermined by the Glazers? It's just a question that we didn't need to ask. It's 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 a, a question I feel like we know the answer to, seeing as what's happened there. But it's concerning, to say the least, considering Ralph is supposed to be moving upstairs into a consultancy role, a structure which really filled me with hope about what's coming up next. But that there... Just a dark, just question marks about that. I don't like it whatsoever. And as I said, if you were to look at, at how we did this window, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it properly tomorrow. I'm gonna do a video when I take a look at every single Premier League's transfer window, and I'm gonna rank them. We'll probably do a tier list. I'm not sure I've actually done one here on United People's TV before, but this was a window of opportunity for Manchester United. We've got a strong squad in areas. Of course, we know that. We went into this season and we all felt that we were one powerful central midfielder away from competing for the Premier League title. We didn't have that midfielder. And obviously, it all started to fall apart under Solskjaer. But I just don't understand when there were players like Zakaria, players like Kamara, players like Kessie, who, of course, I'm not saying that they are the answers to our problems, ladies and gents, but they represented low-risk, potentially high-return signings that could potentially improve and strengthen a key part of our squad. And bearing in mind that Nemanja Matic is probably going to be sold in the summer anyway. Bearing in mind that Donny van der Beek is not a defensive midfielder. And neither is Fred. And neither is Scott McTominay. It's just such a gaping hole in the squad where there were low risk, low price, potentially high reward investments that we could have made in the January transfer window. Instead, we haggled over Jesse Lingard and we, man, we made that deal collapse right at the end. We haggled over everything. And it's just it just staggers me, really. At what is is it the fact that the, the, the club looks at our midfield and sees it completely differently to fans? Because I don't understand it. As I said, nearly five years ago since we signed our last proper defensive midfielder, what is going on? And this has happened with Michael Carrick being assistant for a few years. Michael Carrick was one of the best midfielders we've had. Michael Carrick, you're telling me he looked at that squad and, and going, you know what, that midfield is good enough. How is it that window go, a window comes and a window goes and another one comes and another one goes and United still do not look at signing a defensive midfielder? As I said, I know it's January. I know that it's not the window where you typically solve your problems. But United, when we didn't get Bruno in the summer, we went after Bruno in the winter. It transformed our season from that point onwards. I saw this January as a real chance. It's not really backing um, Ralph Rannick. It's backing the fucking club. Because we all know that's just the, the key weakness in our team. Watch it now. We're going to get an injury to Scott McTominay at some point, And Matic is going to be the man that's tasked with playing every single game despite being 469 years old. And we know he can't play week in, week out. Especially when you come towards the Champions League and you're playing Atletico Madrid. Uh, uh, on a, like a Wednesday and all of a sudden you've got Chelsea on a Sunday. Two huge games. Our midfield does not have the depth to, to match the intensity that's going to be required and the quality that's going to be required for those two games. And it's just pissed me off. That's why I put it, look, I think United are a joke for doing it. I don't understand how five years down the line since signing Emmanuel Matic that we still do not seem to be looking at signing a defensive midfielder because all of January there was no real word on Zakaria to United. It was just all hope that we wanted to sign one. There was no real word on Kamara. Fabrizio Romano said that United were offered him and we turned it down. There was no murmurs really about Frank Kesse and of course he's not really a defensive midfielder and that's going to be the counter argument to all this saying Sam, you're just talking about square pegs, round holes. They're not really the answers to our problems but I'll tell you what isn't the answer to our problem. Do an absolutely sweet FA. And that is what United have done in this January transfer window. I didn't see it as the time where we could properly solve the problem. Me looking at it now, genuinely, I think Declan Rice could be that man. But could we have improved our squad, improved our options, and given Ralph Ragnick and Manchester United a much better chance of having a rounded end to the that next three, four months for the balance to be there? Yes, we could have. And we could have done it very cheaply and very simply with players who were available as free transfers next summer. Instead, we've done nothing. And for me, that's pissed me off. And I don't know, I don't know at what point this changes. I, do, I, I, it, I, I was staggered for the fact that Jaden Sancho was our main target in the summer and not a defensive midfielder. I stood by that. And I will stand by that until Manchester United finally pull the finger out and sign one. I think that could have been in January. I think that could have been done very cheaply. 
this might be a slightly different reaction a video, sorry, here on United People's TV. It's more of a reaction video, but I felt like I wanted to do something now that the window's closed. Honestly, though, please let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll speak about it in a bit more depth in the morning.